The management of new onset atrial fibrillation is typically a three-step process. First, slow the ventricular rate, then restore sinus rhythm, and lastly, maintain a normal heart rate and regular rhythm. When a patient is unstable, as in the case of hemodynamic instability or signs of heart attack or heart failure, it's more important to restore sinus rhythm by cardioversion first. This will lessen the risk of a serious cardiac event. But in this lesson, we'll discuss the typical first step, slowing ventricular rate. The goal of rate control is to slow and regulate ventricular rate. But what's the target heart rate for patients with AF? Well, we don't really know for sure. If your patient has few or no symptoms and good left ventricular function, a resting heart rate below 110 beats per minute is okay. This is called lenient rate control, and it's believed lenient control will still help prevent cardiomyopathy. On the other hand, if your patient is symptomatic or has heart failure, you want to aim for a resting heart rate below 80 beats per minute and below 100 beats per minute with exertion. Improved rate control in these patients will lead to better symptom control and better heart function. AF can often be managed in the outpatient setting for patients with no or mild symptoms, oral rate control medication can be used. However, if the patient is symptomatic and uncomfortable because of their symptoms, intravenous rate control can help to slow the ventricular rate and relieve symptoms faster. This can still be done in the outpatient setting if an equipped facility is available. When treating initial AF in the hospital, intravenous dosing provides a fast-acting option when slowing the heart rate and is recommended. Once controlled, the patient can be switched to oral tablets for long-term maintenance of rate control. To achieve this, the 2014 ACC AHA guidelines recommend the use of beta blockers like bisoprolol and metoprolol or calcium channel blockers like diltiazem or verapamil to slow ventricular rate for all classifications of atrial fibrillation. But there are two specific instances to remember when choosing a rate control medication. First, patients with so-called pre-excitation atrial fibrillation where impulses move between the atria and ventricles along abnormal or accessory pathways should only receive oral beta blockers for rate control. And second, patients with heart failure should not receive calcium channel blockers. Though not the drug of choice, the antiarrhythmic amiodarone can also be used for rate control. The IV formulation is useful in critically ill patients without pre-excitation, and the oral dose should be considered when other rate control options are not working. Recently, digoxin has become less popular as a rate control medication, except for specific patient populations, including those with heart failure, hemodynamic instability, or acute coronary syndrome. So I hope you liked this video. Absolutely make sure to check out the course this video was taken from and to register for a free trial account which will give you access to selected chapters of the course. If you want to learn how MetMastery can help you become a great clinician, make sure to watch the About MetMastery video. So thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.